Back in the Word of God today, we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. But before we get started, let's ask for words of wisdom from our Heavenly Father in Jesus' name. Paul was writing to the people of Thessalonica. He was very pleased with the work that they had done in taking the word of Jesus Christ to whomsoever would believe. In chapter 4 of Thess uh, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, a lot of people will get the uh, rapture theory from this chapter. So it warrants us going back and exploring this chapter again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse 13. And it reads, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. This is talking about the people who have already passed on. That ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. People who don't have faith, who don't know of our Heavenly Father, don't believe in our Heavenly Father, have not studied the Word, they have no hope. They think their loved ones are out in a hole in the ground, and that's just not true. We know in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 6 and 7, it talks about when the silver cord breaks. When we pass on from this physical body, immediately we are transformed into our spiritual beings, and we will be with our Heavenly Father. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and if you're a Christian, you do believe that is what we believe we live. It is ingrained in us in our spirit. Even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now what is this? Those people who have passed on in Jesus Christ, they will come in the spirit with him when he returns here. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. This means we will not precede them. Why will we not precede them? Because they are already in the spiritual body. Our body, when Jesus Christ returns here, our flesh body, we will be transformed from that into our spiritual body. We cannot precede them. We cannot prevent them. Because they're already in the spiritual body, and we have to go through that transformation. For the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout, and from the voice of an arch the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Why is that? Because they're already with him. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds this is not talking about an atmosphere cloud this is talking about a gathering or a group uh, just in hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 uh, paul spoke colloquial greek and he was talking about a cloud of witnesses there this is that same thing we're going to be caught up in a gathering of the believers of jesus christ to meet the Lord in the air. This is not an atmospheric air. This is in the spiritual body. We cannot speak, be in and see our Heavenly Father in the flesh body. We have to be transformed into our spiritual body because it's a different dimension. And so shall we live, shall we be with the Lord forever and ever. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to worry about. Everything has been foretold of us. There is no such thing as a rapture. It's not in the Bible. This has been a mistranslation, and people have taken it and gone crazy with it. And what it's actually doing is setting people up to follow the Antichrist. Because if you don't realize, and if you're not in the Word of God, and you haven't studied it, and the church has not taught you that the Antichrist, who, which in the Greek means instead of the Antichrist comes first, you will follow the Antichrist because he comes in prosperously and peacefully, as it says in Daniel. And many people will follow him. They'll be like, oh, Jesus Christ is here. He's come here to save us. And what they, the worst thing a Christian could ever do is wake up and find out that they have ha been part of that falling away, that great apostasy, the falling of the Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? That is Satan himself. A Christian has become a Satan worshiper. And that is not going to be a good day for a lot of people. So let's get into 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1, and it reads, 
But of the times and of the seasons, brother, ye have no need that I write unto you. We know the season. We know the time that we are in. Uh, we are in the uh, the season of the fig tree generation that started in 1948. It's growing a lot of gray hairs on it. We are seeing a, just as a woman who travailed in labor with her child, the uh, labor pains are getting closer and closer, more intense. As the end of this earth age comes, we know what's going on. But for, for yourselves, know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now we know that for us, it, that uh, the coming of the Lord is not going to be as a thief in the night. Because we are the children of light. We have been in the word of God. We have understanding of what's going on. Who is he talking about? For when they shall say peace and safety, just like when uh, Daniel was talking about the Antichrist coming in prosperously and peacefully, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as to fell upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, ye people of Thessalonica, the, and the people who today are in the Word of God and have understanding, we are to listen, we are to read, we are to have eyes to see with understanding and ears to hear with understanding. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. That, that will not happen because we are in the Word of God. We know what's going on. And a thief cannot be come upon a watchman. A watchman knows when a thief is coming in. A watchman doesn't fall asleep. We stay alert. We stay attuned to what's going on. Ye are of the children of the light and the children of the day and not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober, be sincere in our seeking of the word of God, our heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, that salvation that was given to us is that perfect gift. We are to pick up our cross. We are to follow Jesus Christ and we are to we have work to do. We're not going to fly away like a bug. There's work to do. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. These are the people that don't have understanding. They don't think they have to worry about anything because they've been taught they're going to fly away like a bug and they're not going anywhere. They're drunken. Their eyes have been closed. They have no clue what's going on. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8, and it reads, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for the helmet and the hope of salvation. This is talking about putting on that complete and that whole armor of God. And let's go over to Ephesians real quick, and we're going to go over to Ephesians chapter 6 and we're going to read about this the whole armor of God we put on that armor of God to stand against the fiery darts of Satan not to fly away like a bug let us read Ephesians chapter 6 let's start at verse 10 finally my brother be strong in the Lord and the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wit walls of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world and they are rampant they are running rampant against spiritual wickedness in high places those pe those people who are pulling the strings of the four hidden dynasties of education uh religion politics and economics they are the Kenites. They're back there pulling those strings. And whatever they have going on, these little puppeteers are following along. When it says the whole world wanders after the beast, it's because they're believing what, this pe what these people are telling them. They believe all the propaganda, the filth, 
that's being brought in and being told that it's the Word of God. Don't worry about the book of Revelation. We're going to be gone. If a man tells you you don't have to study the Word of God, that is your first indication. This is not a man or woman sin of God. We are to read and study and know the Word of God. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand that in the evil day and having done all to stand, not to run away, not to fly away, but to stand. Stand therefore having your loins skirt about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace above all, taking on the shield of faith wherefore with ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit what is that that's the word of god which is the word of god praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints for everyone we know who the saints we know those set aside ones because they're carrying the true word of God. We pray for each other. We edify each other. We take that word. We strengthen it. We give each other strength. Our strength ultimately comes from our Heavenly Father. But we, we lean upon each other as well. Because we know we have that true word of God. Back into First Thessalonians chapter 5. And let us start at verse 10, uh, verse 9. For God had, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that with he, we wake or sleep, we should live together with him, whether we're still in the flesh body, waiting on his return or we have passed on and we believed upon Jesus Christ we will be live together with him for ever eternity wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even us also ye do and that's just the comfort of each other and the leaning on each other and uh, listening to each other and knowing who those fellow saints are and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you and in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient toward all men best we can the best we can we're never going to be perfect and I think you know I don't have a lot of patience for evil I don't have a lot of patience a lot of time for people who bring and and lie to God's children about the Word of God but I also have to understand that our Heavenly Father has got this under control and my job is to take the take the word take my father's word to whomsoever will believe upon and get the message out See that none render evil for evil. Now, I give evil about three chances, but on that third time, you know, we are not, we are Christians are not uh, a doormat. You know, we'll take so much, and then you know what? It's time to put evil in its place. Uh, and I, you know, and I'm getting better about the patience, and I'm, this is not about me, but we are not second class citizens. We're not let to let evil run over us we're not to exchange it evil with evil we breathe and do the best we can but sometimes you gotta just confront that evil seeing that none render evil for evil unto any man but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men rejoice evermore pray without ceasing every single day be in prayer tell our Heavenly Father you love him today tell your Heavenly Father you love him today you know I when I think about everything our Heavenly Father has done for us if you think about that on a daily basis you know I can never 
ever in my wildest dreams even come uh, a small uh, example. But I'll do the best I can to carry that word. You know, I'm very small in comparison to our, to our Lord Jesus Christ. But my job to do, our job as Christians is to take the word out there. Is to get the word out. And it's not always going to be well taken. And we know that. And there will be persecution. Anytime you take the word of God chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and people haven't heard it before in its entirety because so many times people go from one verse to another just to make a certain point. When you go chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and being led by the Holy Spirit, you know, and they've never heard that before, then there will be persecution because they would rather live in the microwave society that says you don't have to do anything but slip it because we're going to fly away. You don't have to read. You don't have to study. You go out and live any way you want to because salvation, you can't lose your salvation. That is true. Once saved, always saved. Salvation is perfect because it comes from Jesus Christ, but we are not perfect. When we fall short, if we don't repent for our sins, we will have to answer for those sins. We can lose our salvation. But we lose it, not our Heavenly Father, not through Jesus Christ. They're perfect. Perfect. We are the ones that are at fault. We are the ones that have to pray for forgiveness and go to our Heavenly Father with a repentant heart. And we are forgiven at that point. We're made new again. We're made pure again. That's when we have that repentant heart is truly being sorry for, for what we have done. And changing our ways. Changing our ways. That is key. And anything we can't do, our Heavenly Father will do. But he expects us to do the work. And He does the relieving of. And He does the changing. But we have to put the work forth. Pray without ceasing in everything. Give thanks for Him. For this is the will of God in Jesus Christ concerning you. Everything. We thank our Heavenly Father for our roof over our head. For the food we have to eat. For His guidance, His protection, His love, His mercy, His grace. Quench not the spirit. We always want it. We can't. We thirst for the word of God. We thirst for the spirit. It can't be quenched. Despise not prophesy. Not prophesy. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. When we are in the world, and but not of the world, that's a very difficult thing. But we have to always stay apart from filth, stay apart from things that we know are evil in our Heavenly Father's eyes. We do not make ourselves apart from us. If, they, if the world can't tell that we're different, that we're Christians, that we are followers of Jesus Christ, there's a reason. They, we have to be different. We have to be in this world. We have a job to do. But we're not to be of this world and the filthy things that are going on. We're not to be sitting back chuckling about all the filth and evil perversion that's going on. We don't become part of that. We don't. When God calls something an abomination, it's an abomination to us as well. And the very... And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, I pray, God. Your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we live a certain way, when we go to our Heavenly Father with a repentant heart, we take the word of Jesus Christ to whomsoever. We do the best we can. We do the best we can. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Many are called. Few are chosen. Brother, pray for us. Pray for one another. We have to continuously do that because we are up against a lot of filth. The world is filled with perversion and evilness. We have to pray for each other. Greet all brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that 
this epistle be read unto the holy brethren. All those saints, all those set aside ones, those who want and seek the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our good Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And amen means that's that. And that's that for today. I hope you enjoy today's teaching. We are going to be in Second Thessalonians. And it is going to be revving up. And it's going to be getting quite personal next time. I hope you join us. If you like today's teaching, like, share, and subscribe. Hope you have a great day. And join us again.